Day 5, the Friday the 27th of June. I wore my brace for 6 hours and 5 minutes and I started at 7.25 in the morning um, till 11 and then I put it back on at 4.10 in the afternoon and took it off at 8.15. What is scoliosis? Scoliosis is a sideways curvature of the spine which usually develops in children around starting around the age of 10 and gets worse with growth. This plaster cast shows uh, what the d deformity caused by scoliosis looks like and what you can see is that the, the whole of the trunk is deviated towards the right side and the ribs at the, on the back of the chest protrude more on the right than on the left and that's due to the rotational component of the deformity. In other words, the whole chest rotates in that direction, pushing the ribs out backwards on the right-hand side. And this is a three-dimensional model of a scan of a patient who had scoliosis and, which, and who's now been operated on and thankfully looks much better. The, the commonest cause is called adolescent scoliosis, uh, because that's when it, uh, that's the time in life when it happens. Uh, it's commoner in girls. It causes a visible deformity of the spine, which can become quite significant and ugly. And uh, one of the reasons that we treat it is for cosmetic reasons. If it gets severe, it can also cause functional problems in so far as it will affect the function of the chest and sometimes the abdomen and restrict your lung capacity and your ability to eat large meals. The curve progresses during growth and will slowly progress during adult life afterwards. So in the long term, it can cause worse problems and it's much easier to treat before it gets severe. The problem is that we have a lot of difficulty in predicting which curves are going to get worse and which aren't. So the only reliable indicator is to watch it over a period of time and simply observe how it behaves. And if it is a very rapidly progressing curve, then those are the ones that we try and treat before they get too bad, that the operation becomes much more difficult and dangerous. Responsible for doing all the bracing for scoliosis. Now we've already gone through what scoliosis is, and we've decided that you're an ideal candidate for having a brace because you do have a curve, but it's not too big at the moment, but you've still got quite a lot of growth left. So I've got a type of brace here that we use, and this is what they look like. Fastens down the back. On Friday the 30th of November, I wore it for 17 and three quarter hours because I have my piano exam. So I obviously didn't wear it for that. If you're between 11 and 18 and you're, you've been recommended to have this operation, uh, once you've agreed to, in principle to have the operation, we will then arrange for you to be seen in the pre-operative assessment clinic shortly before the date of the operation. In other words, one or two weeks before the operation, when we will check that you're fit and you may have one or two blood tests um, and we will show you around the necessary parts of the hospital, the ward and the high dependency unit where you'll be after the operation. Uh, I know he's, as we always do, gone into depth with the operation and into the precise details. Uh, and I know you've been to our consent day where you met some other people who are going to have the operation. Uh, the reason for your visit today is to see if you have any final questions uh, that you want to address to me. Um, and just to summarise, you know we're going to do the operation to put some rods and screws in your spine, the aim being to straighten the spine and prevent it getting worse. So all that's left for me to do is I'd like to hand you over to Anne Chandler. She's what's called our scoliosis liaison. Anne keeps a database of all the girls uh, who've had scoliosis surgery who are willing to talk to other patients. And we find that although we can tell you what we think the operation is going to involve, we obviously never had the operation, so it's only from our perspective. Hello Daisy. Hello Joe. Hello. My name's Anne Chandler. I'm a retired physio and um, my daughter had scoliosis surgery some years ago. Mr Crawford operated on her. And I come to the hospital every week to the scoliosis clinic and just talk to the patients about the non-surgical side of the operation and also if you'd like to speak to other patients who've had the operation then I can put you in touch with 
somebody who's had the operation not too long ago. You come in the day before. The next morning, um, when you go down to theatre, Daisy, your mum can go with you, and she can stay with you till you're asleep. And then for the first night, you know you're being in, in the high dependency unit. Yeah. I'm sure the surgeons explained all that to you. Right, hi, Holly. Hi. Um, I'm Jenny, one of the orthopedic theatre nurse. Um, just here to do some checkups. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Can I just see your response, please? We usually admit patients to hospital the day before the operation or on sometimes on the morning of the operation. It's very important that you don't have anything to eat or drink from midnight uh, before the day of the operation. 25th of December, I wore my brace all morning and then I took it off to eat Christmas dinner so I could eat loads more. On the day of the operation, we will take up to the anaesthetic room in theatre where the anaesthetist, who you will have met before the operation, will um, put you off to sleep, usually with a little injection, and that's it. That's the last you'll know until you wake up afterwards. And on the day of the operation, you come into hospital and the nurses on the ward will put some cream on the back of your hand, which will numb the skin so that by the time you come into the anaesthetic room, usually about an hour and a half later, the area on your hand is, is completely numb. So you come up from the ward with your parents and then when you arrive in the anaesthetic room, we'll take the cream off and then we put what's called a little cannula in the back of your hand, which will stay in your hand for usually about four or five days. And through the top of this cannula, we can pop you off to sleep. And you go off to sleep, you don't do anything silly when you're asleep, you drop unconscious, and then while you're unconscious, you won't remember anything of what goes on and we will do your operation. At the end of the operation, when the surgery is complete, we'll wake you up, we turn you back onto your back and then we take you to the recovery area. In the recovery area, you'll be awake, but you'll be quite sleepy and it is there that we're going to sort out your pain relief to make sure that you're nice and comfortable and control any fluids or anything that you might need to keep you safe. Um, throughout your stay in recovery. Once you're a little bit more awake, usually about two hours after you've arrived in recovery, we arrange for you to be transferred to the critical care complex where I hand over to one of my other anaesthetic colleagues who is also a specialist in unconscious and critical care patients and he will look after you or she will look after you over the next 24 hours to make sure that you are kept comfortable and that your needs are met. And at the end of that, providing we're all satisfied that everything is going well, you will return from the critical care complex back to the ward, usually about 36 hours after the operation. Are you ready? Yeah. Bye bye. That's it. Okay, Mama, just check the consent for me to you. Correction of school Yes, yes. Your mum is all signed. Yeah, signed. Thank you very much. Any checks? Okay. So we're about to start the operation. You can see the uh, number of people that are in theatre for the team approach to it. The most important people. The guys at the top, Dr. Barker and his team, the and then obviously it's one of the monitors. It's important that you understand the magnitude of the operation. It is a big operation and there's no two ways about that. And there are some associated risks. Some of the risks are pretty serious, but infrequent. The risk that we worry about most of all is the possibility of damaging the spinal cord, which can cause paralysis. In other words, you would possibly lose the use in your legs and the sensation and uh, the control of your bowels and bladder, which is obviously a, a major disastrous complication. Um, and we do everything possible to reduce that to a bare minimum. And in uncomplicated cases of scoliosis, it is very, very rare. Nevertheless, the risk is still there. The main way in which we avoid that risk is by monitoring the spinal cord electrically during the operation, so we can test the function of the spinal cord continuously during the operation, and if anything interferes with the function of the spinal cord, then we uh, immediately check to see whether we've caused any uh, damage or pressure onto the spinal cord, and we can do something about that to reverse that problem. Daisy, come through. Hi. Do you want to pop your little bag on her chair yeah. then, and your mum can have the other chair? Thank you. And then if you'd like to have a seat on a couch, yeah. So my name is Helen. 
I'm a healthcare scientist and I'm going to be doing the test today. Yeah. We're also going to be monitoring your surgery tomorrow. Okay. The goal is for us to continuously assess the functional integrity of the spinal cord, which may be at risk during the scoliosis operation. Throughout your operation, we monitor tiny electrical signals that pass in both directions along your spinal cord. Um, we use sensory and motor evoke potential tests, and we let the surgeon know if there's any significant changes to those signals. Neuromonitoring can't eliminate the risks entirely, um, so you still need to take into consideration the risks specific to your operation, which the surgeon will have discussed with you. So we usually see the patient um, the day before surgery to perform a simple preoperative neurophysiological test called a sensory evoke potential. Um, that checks to make sure that you've got the good signals that we can monitor during your operation. We usually take this opportunity to draw some marks on your legs, um, which will help us position the electrodes we use for the monitoring. During your visit, um, you will have a chance to ask us any questions that you have about the monitoring. On the day of your operation, once you're anaesthetised, we'll place the electrodes in various positions on your hands, your legs and your head. Um, these will remain in place until near the end of the operation, but will be removed before you wake up. We send all patients an information leaflet about the monitoring, um, and this will give you further information about the neuromonitoring in Norwich. But if you have any other questions, just please ask us. Tuesday the 12th of July, um, and I've come in for my operation this afternoon. My operation's tomorrow, and I'm excited but nervous. Other possible risks are that you will lose a bit of blood and we'll need to give you a blood transfusion um, possibly. That is a very safe procedure in itself and isn't really anything to worry about. Uh, we always worry about the possibility of infection during any big operation and um, if the metal rods that we put into the spine were to become infected it's just possible they might need to be removed. But again that risk is, is very small uh, and we give you antibiotics during the operation which reduces the, uh, the risk considerably. Other risks are to do with the position that you have to lie in during the operation. So you'll be lying on your front during the operation. We have to make, make sure that you don't experience undue pressure on any parts of your body, particularly the eyes. If the eyes get pressed on for too long, it can damage or even blind you. So we've taken a straight rod and we bent it to the shape of the spine. And now we're gonna pull the spine to this bent rod. And in the process, by rotating it, we'll straighten the spine. So um, just finished the operation and uh, we had about 95 degree curve and I think we've got a really nice correction to probably about 10 to 15 uh, degrees. So a really nice correction. But more importantly, the, the child is okay. No problems with neural monitoring and uh, uh, not too much blood loss. So hopefully it's all going to work out well. She'll have a straight spine and hopefully after a period of recovery she'll be able to get back to normal activities. After the operation you'll be taken to a ward where there will be um, a, a somewhat increased level of nursing compared to a normal ward uh, or you may go to the high dependency unit uh, so that we can monitor your condition very closely. Um, and uh, you probably won't remember anything about the first day or two after the operation because you will have a, a fair amount of pain-killing medication in your system and you'll have some residual effects from the anaesthetic. Hello, my name's David. I'm one of the orthopaedic specialist nurses here looking after the children in the Norfolk and Norwich. Just come to check how you are after your operation. How is your pain at the moment? Alright, it's a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, that's to be expected. So when you first come round, we'll make sure that you can move your legs properly and then we'll uh, start some special type of painkiller which involves putting some local anaesthetic through a little tube into your spine which will numb your spinal cord to a mild degree. You will be quite uncomfortable because you'll have a number of tubes, uh, a, a drip, in probably into your neck and um, maybe a little tube going into your nose down to the stomach to make sure that your stomach remains empty a catheter in your bladder which you won't be aware of and those tubes will stay in for one or two days after the operation and be removed bit by bit as you recover most patients are able to get up out of bed on the 
first, second or third day after the operation. Uh, and each day you get up and move around a little bit more. Hello Daisy, I'm Holly, one of the physios. I just want to help get you moving. Is that alright? Yeah. Feel ready? Hi. Ready? Should we just walk down this way? Yeah. Most patients are able to go home in, a, in about a week. Quite often one patient leaves more or less at the same time as the next week's patient arrives. Um, so usually in young patients such as yourselves, uh, the recovery period in hospital is about one week. How has your pain been, Daisy, since the operation? Um, it was quite bad the other day because I had the epidurals out, um, but it's been a bit better now. And when you had the epidurals in, did you find that was taking care of your pain really yeah, well? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they do work generally quite well. Very good. Daisy, how much taller are you now? Nine centimetres. Nine centimetres. That's taller than your brother. Is he older or younger? He's younger, but he's always taller. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have a look at your x-rays. And you can see why you're nine centimetres taller. See the difference? Oh, my way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you can see that why you're nine centimeters uh, taller. Yeah. yeah, it's really difficult because you can see it's almost a hundred degrees, and the bigger the curve, the more likely you're going to cause damage. So you really want to correct the spine to a point where the patient does not have any neurological deficit. So you want to get a really straight spine like this, and you know we broke it in several places and we put the screws in, we bent it, bent it. Uh, and Till we got it really straight. Now you will see an animation uh, which shows how the spine is corrected using screws which have long tabs and then you get a rod which you bend to the desired shape of the spine and then the rod is fixed to the spine with those little grub screws and slowly you can see that the rod and the spine come together and as a spine comes to the straight rod the spine itself straightens out gradually. Now as we're doing this we are carefully monitoring the patient's neurological function and at the end of it you have this appearance where the spine is straight as illustrated on this plastic model. And you can see this on the x-ray uh, which we demonstrated earlier where Daisy's spine has been corrected from 95 degrees to about 20 degrees which in itself is, is, is a very pleasing result. Activities that involve gentle movement, uh, like swimming, although swimming can be pretty strenuous um, in other respects, it doesn't cause any heavy impact on your spine. Uh, you can really do that as soon as you want to. So a bit of gentle swimming uh, any time after three, three or four weeks is absolutely fine. Hello, uh, my name is Andrew Cook and I'm one of the uh, orthopaedic consultant spine surgeons at the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital. Um, part of my job is to do the scoliosis operations working on children and adolescents who've got these curves that we've been talking about in this video. Once you've had your operation and you've been discharged, you will go home where you'll be given lots of information about things to watch out for and how best to get through your recovery. And then we follow you up um, after the operation at between six to eight weeks. And when you come to the outpatient clinic, the first thing we do is just talk to you about how you're feeling and how you're recovering. And it's the chance for you to let us know how you're doing. We will look at your wound on your back to make sure that it's healing up nicely and to make sure that there's no signs of any infection or any other problems around it. It's not unusual to occasionally have some small stitches that are are poking through the skin and these are the dissolvable stitches that will drop off and shouldn't cause you any problems. We also look at how you're standing and how you're walking and we find out how your pain levels are. Um, and We find out how good the medicines you're taking are for your pain and how much you're actually using. Normally at that stage most patients are walking normally and have, uh, are not requiring lots and lots of painkillers. And we'll also take the opportunity to take another x-ray to look at how your back has changed shape. And we show you those x-rays and we can compare the x-ray you have before the operation with the x-ray after the operation. And we can show you how your back has changed shape and how your spine has changed shape. And also this lets us check that all the metal work is in the right place and it isn't causing any problems. And then we let you go away um, and carry on, go back to school um, as 
um, has been discussed. And then we follow you up again at a later stage, around the six month stage, to see how you're doing then. At this stage, we expect you to be going back to most of your activities. But once again, we will examine you in the clinic. We're looking for any problems that there might be with the wound. We're looking at how you're standing, how you're walking and how you're feeling. And again, we do x-rays to make sure that everything is in the right place and that there's no problems. We don't expect there to see problems, but the x-ray helps us check for that. And once that's been done, we follow you up on an annual basis until you're about 18 years old. And again, these are all just checks to make sure that there's no further problems, to make sure that you're happy and give you the opportunity to ask us any questions you may have. And also, that if you require anything such as physiotherapy, um, then we can organize that for you. Sometimes patients find that they do get some weird aches and pains in their backs after the operation as your muscles readjust to the change in, the change in shape that we have organized for you. So physio can help with that, as does simple activities such as swimming and regular sport and regular exercise. But eventually, we will discharge you from the clinic, hopefully happy with the treatment that you've received and let you carry on with your life and hopefully never have to think about your back again. And we had waited for about probably half an hour and then they called us down to the recovery. And there she was, it was pretty moving actually because you, you walk in and she's just literally come out of surgery looking pretty pale, um, but just about awake and- Lots of tubes. Lots of tubes and obviously all the machines and, and what have you. But I, obviously I got a bit of a lump in my throat when, when I, saw her recovered and uh, Can you remember um, the first words? I'm not paralysed. Yeah, that was, that <laughs> was the first was the thing. Next, <laughs> next, the next, uh, can I go on holiday? <laughs> <laughs> so we're still right yeah. back in it. <laughs> <laughs>